Hi, everybody. Today, I'm going to show you how to join the ends of this twisty thing into a bracelet, bangle bracelet. Um, <clears throat> it's called the Cellini, Cellini spiral. It's all over the internet. People have been teaching it for years, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I just taught this class live in person, and uh, it was a three-hour class, so no, I didn't get this whole thing done. And I used larger big giant pony beads to demo end on, but I thought, why don't I show it to you in the bead sizes that you're actually going to use? So what I'll do is I'll hook up my camera. I'm going to see if this works and see if I can get it to do what it's supposed to do. Oh, I need to go to camera. Then I will get it positioned in the right place. Here we go. And yeah, it's in the right place. So I'll hit my share screen button and I'll, I will just show you what's going on. Here we go. So yeah, basically, I want to make sure I'm actually, yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I am. I think I'm recording this. I hope I am. Um, so yeah, what you do with this Cellini, Cellini spiral is you finish the row. Um, this is the starting end with the tail thread coming out. This is the end I finished. And what I have to do is I have to fit these suckers together. And that means it might have to twist a little bit because there's this green bead and size eight on either side of the tiny beads. I've got to go to the ladder since I'm working this direction, which for me is clockwise. I have to screw it around so that this thing is matching up and I have to twist it around. It's a twisty thing, so say la vie. I think I'll twist it the other way. See if that'll work. And yeah, kind of. Um, let's see. Yeah, see where they match up. The trick on this, the way this is done is it's a peyote stitch tube and everything progresses. Oh, wrong way. Okay. And I have to make sure that yeah, what I'm doing matches up to what I did. So I'm going to twist, I'm going to just manhand, you know, female handle this into shape. And yeah, that's got a basically the gap after this bead has to have this bead fit into it. The gap after this bead has to have or the gap where this bead is have to have, has to have this bead fit into it. And where the rubber meets the road is at this spot where my thread's coming out, I have to have the old green bead match into the slot, the down beads part, right after where the new green bead fit. And I'll tell you before I begin this that the last row that I did on my most recently finished end, I went through those beads a second time because if you go through these beads just once, they're going to wobble on you. So they're going to get out of place. So let's see. Yeah, here we go. I will actually start beading. Um, at first, this is not going to match up super tight. But that's all right. Now, yeah, I actually have to make sure that it follows the, the way it's been going. I don't want to match it up in the wrong spot. So this, that's my, this is my new, that's my old. I just go back and forth, whatever beads sticking up. 
Let's see. Yeah, that green beads, the green bead is fitting into the slot provided under that blue bead. Then I go into the blue bead because this is a particular design that involves a kind of uh, a progressive uh, migration of the beads. So let's see. Thread tension. See how this this blue bead has to fit into that green sl the slot provided by that green bead right there, and the bead I go through is the following bead, which is the next one down from that. And this is resisting me, but Hey, too bad. They're only beads. I can I can squeeze them into place. So the next one I want to show you. It's kind of hard to show you because the beads are translucent. But see that big bead? I'm going from oh, I'm covering what I'm showing you. I'm going from this bead up into this guy. The bead I go into after that, just like on the rest of this, whatever you come out of, you string. So I'm coming out of the biggest bead on here and I'm going into the biggest bead on here. Oh yes, that thread likes to get caught behind the beads. So here we go, that's a coming. And you can see how this is matching up. I'm gonna get that sucker good and tight. And now I have to go inside the pocket here. And I have to kind of back, it seems like I'm backtracking, but it's just because it's twisting. So I'm going through that guy to fill in that spot. And once I get it tight, it shows up and it's it, it's doing it shows that it's doing the right thing. Now let's see. Ah, I have to skip this guy. I'm going to see I'm coming out the greasy or waxy blue bead. So I need to go into the next waxy blue bead, and that means skipping that big giant bead. That big giant bead is the, going to fit into the spot, into the slot. See how that goes? Black and in. Then I have to kind of work with the tube here. Then. And the, the key is tightening it. If you're not sure where you are, tighten it up and see do it fit here. Let's see here. So I'm going through that one, the green one again, the translucent one. I gotta tighten it up really good. And I'm starting to be able to work on the other side of this guy. That's a lovely thing. And I do whatever Again, whatever bead I'm coming out of, in this case, this green, I'm going into the same type of bead to set color and size. So I gotta dig out that green one that's trying to hide from me. I'm just gonna bust that puppy open and let her rip. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Me one bead zero. Okay. And and again I have to I have to twist it because it's a twisty thing and it's trying to res I'm trying to twist the other way. So I'm almost done. I've got a little bit of gap doses here. Um let's see, I came out of that. I 
got to go back down to the old part. The next bead in the line. Ah, a few more stitches to go. These are trying to hide from me, so I got to dig them out because they're the small ones, but yay, I dug it out. And tighten, tighten, tighten. When in doubt, tighten. Up tight and all right. Every other stitch is the same as whatever you're coming in. Down here, it's whatever coming, I'm coming out of. On the other end, it's whatever is right next to. Ooh, do I have? Okay, yeah. I'm skipping the orange bead and going through the next orange bead because this turquoise bead fills in that gap down there. Boink. I gotta dig it out again. When I taught this class, I had people start with the size eight beads. You go from size 11 up to size eight, up to size six, back to down to size eight, back to size 11. And all the instructions generally show that you start with the smallest beads and then you go to the biggest and then you go back to the smallest. But I found that, well, because people, especially when you're beginning, you might use not the tiniest bead you possibly, or not the tiniest needle you possibly can. If you're using size uh, 11, size 10 beading needles and you're using size 11, especially vintage check or vintage or check size 11 seed beads, then when you start with size 11 on a Cellini, Cellini spiral, you will have to step up at that spot. Well, why not stop, uh, why not step up at the size eight beads? So I started with size eight went up to size, let's see, yeah, went up to size eight, the next size eight, size six, back down to size eight, and I finished with size 11, but my step up again was in the size eight beads. So you have more leeway uh, room, you know, uh, so, you, you know, you can get your needle through the size eight beads three times and not have to try to get your needle through your size 11 beads a, th a third time, which might be difficult if you're using a size 10 beading needle. So, hey, I just finished. I'm going to not consider that finished, but I'm going to keep going. I'll probably do this again a couple times around. Lo and behold, it fits my hand thing to keep in mind with these bangle bracelets is they have to not only just fit over your wrist, they have to fit over your knuckles. So make sure they fit over your knuckles before you size, uh, before you think you're done. So for everybody who took that class, I hope you enjoyed the class. I think you did. I, that's what I heard anyway. And that is how to finish it in real life size beads, the size that you are actually using. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Ooh, let's see. Stop share. And yeah, take it easy. Have fun beating, folks. Bye.